Our day long coverage of one of the worst days for JCPS and our city is continuing right now. This happened at 630 this morning, right at WJ Hodge and Chestnut Street in the Russell neighborhood. That's about 20 blocks west of downtown. Police say three teenagers were shot. One of the victims identified to WHS 11 News by his aunts is 16 year old Tyree Smith, an Eastern High School junior. He died at the hospital. All are JCPS students at Eastern High School in Middletown. Right now, Metro Police need your help. They want to find this vehicle. They say it was in the area during the shooting, and LMPD is hoping to learn new information from whoever was inside this Jeep. It is a gray Jeep with an Illinois license plate reading these, this information, BD91644. And tonight, we are bringing you team coverage from WHAS 11. We're at Eastern High School hearing from a therapist who specializes in this kind of trauma. We're also breaking down the response from city leaders and local authorities. But first, we're learning more about the life of 16 year old Tyree Smith, his aunt telling us today he was a diligent worker with a bright future. WHS 11's Isaiah Kim Martinez joins us live with her words and reaction from Eastern High School parents this afternoon. Isaiah. Well, Doug, family and friends still trying to process that this could even happen here while students wait for a ride to school. Now, Tyree's Aunt Sharonda Smith explaining that her nephew was mature beyond his years. He wanted to go to work. That was his obligation. That was his commitment. He was committed to it. Yeah. At seven, at 16 years old. Meanwhile, we saw long lines of parents picking up their kids at Eastern High School's dismissal. JCPS told us they had extra security on site, one parent of two, even telling me students had to be escorted when leaving the classroom throughout the day for safety. She talked to us about the emotional impact this is having on kids. Even with my own kid, you know, coming in, her texting me and having, having some anxiety during class and is this someone that's going to come to the school? Is this, you know, is there a retaliation? Is this over with? that type of thing, kids are not even able to focus on what's going on in the classroom. And back to Tyree's family, his aunt says they don't believe he was targeted here, but just in the wrong place at the wrong time. We'll hear more from her coming up at six. Doug. Isaiah, thank you very much. Now the mayor, the police chief, Metro Council members all appeared with the JCPS superintendent to talk about the out of control violence and how it has now reached areas we haven't seen before. WHAS 11's Rachel Droz has more on what they said today. She is also live from the area of the shooting today. Hello, Rachel. Hi, Doug, and these community leaders were showing a lot of emotion this morning and outrage about this shooting. Those speaking earlier today saying this could have been anyone's kid. Police and city leaders say they're going to throw everything they have at the case. Two federal agencies, the FBI and ATF, have been brought in to help. The leader of Louisville's FBI branch says he, like others with kids in the community, are taking this shooting personally. We live here too. The, the agents that are embedded, the agents with the FBI live in Louisville. Our kids go to school bus stops here as well. And, and we want the violence to end as much as anybody on this stage and, and in the audience. Louisville Mayor Greg Fisher says this 16 year old's death marks the 145th homicide in the city. Gun control, a top issue he discussed today. Same with LMPD Chief Erica Shields, both strongly advocating for reforms to get a handle on illegal guns in Louisville. And leaders also reminded people who own guns that make sure you are handling those responsibly. Lock them up because you end up leaving them in your car. Chief Shields says that is one way you could possibly have it stolen. Doug. Well, uh, Rachel, uh, watching that mid morning news conference today, it was clear that they want to see more of a community response and continual involvement, uh, but they really had no solid answers either. Yeah, they didn't. That's why they're asking all of us that live in this community, act like it's our community, take steps to look into things. If you're questioning something, report it to police. If you overhear your kids talking about something, ask them about it. And if it turns out that it could be something in connection with this crime that happened right here this morning or something else that has happened in the city, they really want you to call because they say they can't do this without you. Doug.
All right, Rachel, thank you very much. Jefferson County Public Schools immediately provided counselors for those at Eastern High School in Middletown. The students, faculty, and parents arriving at that school for class this morning only to learn about the tragedy miles away that would soon impact all of them. WHS 11's Gabrielle Harmon has more on the help of the counselors. Here at Eastern High, JCPS counselors are working with students who are traumatized by this morning's bus stop shooting. One local therapist tells me that with the everyday stressors of gun violence, the pandemic and everyday school related issues, it's best to reestablish a safe environment so that students can begin working through what they just experienced. So like this morning, you know, a bus stop is no longer safe. Creating a safe environment for kids to share their feelings following a traumatic experience is key in their recovery. Tiffany Harris is a licensed therapist with Transcend Counseling and says everyone in that child's life needs to be involved. Um, meaning asking kids what makes you feel safe. Um, what things can we do in the home that make you feel comfortable? Or even just listening to your child when they are ready to share. Um, our kids have been through a lot over the last couple of years, not even with just this event, but there are a lot of things that have happened in our community that has compounded that's impacted our children. Um, some of them are more open to have conversations and to talk to someone. Others are just reserved, and so it's hard to tell. There are 300 counselors with JCPS, each one prepared to meet all of the students' needs. The services provided are to help students process what they have experienced and are offered in a variety of ways depending on a student's need. Right now, school officials are calling on everyone in the community to rally behind every child. That we act together to make sure that our children are safe and that no child, again, stands at a bus stop and has to face fear like this. If you would like to get your child counseling or to learn more about what Transcends Counseling offers, we'll have a link to it on our website. For WHAS 11, I'm Gabrielle Harmon. And we also wanted to see how youth programs in Louisville are reacting to this morning's tragedy. Coming up later at 530, you'll hear from a local martial arts instructor who says in solving the violence comes down to resources. WHS 11's Grace McKenna will have this report, the new interview coming up at 530. And then we're going to also be checking in on a vigil at the shooting scene expected to start around 530 tonight. And again, right now throughout our newscast, we're going to continue to show you this picture of the Jeep police are searching for spotted in the area after this morning's attack. Police are saying they want to talk to any of the occupants who may have information about what happened. It's a gray Jeep with an Illinois license plate reading BD91644. If you know anything, call police. The anonymous tip lines 574 LMPD. Again, it's a gray Jeep with an Illinois license plate. The department has not said at this moment that this is the shooter's vehicle, but authorities believe the Jeep, the people in this Jeep could help with the investigation. Again, it was spotted in the area by these cameras. Remember, you can continue to follow the developments in this deadly shooting on our website, whas11.com, and always on the WHAS 11 app. Again, more coverage throughout our evening.